everyone and welcome to Joseph's. In this video I'm going to be discussing my top um, 20 favourite roller coasters in the world. So sit back, relax and I hope you enjoy this video. Come to the number 20 spot is Icon. This coaster may be small compared to other coasters in the surrounding area, but it still packs a punch. And although the launch is quite weak compared to other launches out there, it still is a fun ride even without the strong launches. The layout itself is actually really fun, full of the um, small ejector pops of airtime, and its interaction with other rides is the biggest highlight for me. The one criticism I do have with the ride is it does meander in certain sections of the ride, but that can be ignored for the amount of um, airtime this ride has and the interaction moments with all the other rides. Coming in the number 19 spot is Kukulun. Now this was my first experience with a gravity group wooden coaster. Um, it, it is one of the best um, gravity groups I've done out there. Um, filled with a great ejector airtime and a great layout in general. Combining it out and back and twist it out together. It's quite smooth for what it does. And it's very um, fast keeping the pacing throughout the ride. The one um, place where I would say the pacing is lacking in is the overbank. And though that does kill some of the ride, the double down and double up provide m m immense amount of ejector air time. It also has quite a um, good theming um, for the entranceway and the um, also features a tunnel. And it's just an overall great ride. So if you get the chance to go to Tato Park or Emerald Park as it's now called, then I'd highly recommend giving Kukulun a go. Coming in the number 18 spot is Goliath. Now this is a ride is designed for pure airtime, and it certainly delivers on the um, airtime front. With the Camelback delivering some great sustained ejector, so does the Stenagrul uh, dive, and the three ejector bunny hills towards the end of the ride, they all provide great sustained ejector airtime. There are a few areas where it does meander, and especially on the second helix, but um, those provide um, great um, forces on it, the two helixes on the ride. And the way it's set over the water, it looks really good. So from an off-ride point of view, it does actually look quite nice to look at. So Goliath comes in at number 18. Coming in the number 17 spot is Troy. Now, the, the thing that makes Troy great for me is the pure length of it. You're on that ride for so long, and it really delivers on all the elements that a wooden coaster should do. Great laterals, great airtime and an overall great experience. It also keeps a um, great pacing to it as well. Um, and especially through that um, station, you're flying th um, through all the elements. I would say it's a little bit rough in some sections, but honestly, th that can be ex um, excused away, and the layout itself is fantastic. The theming as well, uh, the way it's themed to a Trojan horse, very clever, as <laughs> a Trojan um, creature is normally... Uh, wouldn't anyway, isn't it? So, yeah, Troy comes in at the number 17 spot. Coming to the number 16 spot is Fly. Now, Fly for me at Fantasialand, I would say it's actually the best themed um, coaster there in the park. It's not my favourite coaster there, but it is definitely the best, one of the best themed. The way it's all so, um, steampunk themed, and the ride itself is actually pretty fun. You launch out at the station, and you have that from... And it's the only flying coaster that actually has a launch, which... It's very unique, and um, one other thing that this um, coaster does do well, unlike a lot of other flying coasters, is because you're um, when you start off you're on your normal position. It means that you're not got any strain on your shoulders from from the um, restraints, which is one of the biggest complaints I have with a flying coaster. Because if they stack, you're uh, not in the good position really when you're uh, just stacking on the brake run. So, flight is very nice for unloading and offloading. It also has a pre-show before you go into the actual launch. And um, that is very cool. You get to see all the factory scenery and steampunk um, theming. And it's actually a flying coaster that does provide ejector airtime, which is crazy to think about, but it just gives it a, a more unique ride experience. In a, um, my one complaint with it is though the restraints are a little bit uncomfortable. I'm not a massive fan of the huge um, on the vest restraints, as I find them a little bit tight around my shoulder blades. But for what it's worth, this ride provides a very good and unique experience. Coming in the number 15 spot is Step Coaster at Legendia. Now this coaster, when you first walk into the uh, Legendia, looks great across a lake there, 
with all the um, water below it, and it just looks majestic across the um, water. It also got a very fun layout, and on with the layout anyway. Um, the first drop on it is stunning, one of the best first drops out there in the world. Then you then go into a reverse sidewinder, which on that reverse sidewinder, you are greyed out for the entirety of that first inversion. It is, it is so intense. And that, that's probably the biggest highlight for me of this ride. It's the sheer intensity of it. Black Coaster is so intense. All the airtime hills provide strong ejector airtime. The inversions are all very whippy and snappy, which is what you want in the co coaster. And it's also got some very good theming to it as well, with the, all that rock work around it. But yeah, Black Coaster is my favourite Vekoma. And it was the transitional period, really, for when Vekoma were known for making, like, rough coasters to when they become a, became a, an elite coaster manufacturer in the coaster world. So yeah, Black Coaster comes in at the number um, 15 spot. Coming into the number 14 spot is Montu. Now Montu is a very good um, B&M invert. Filled with lots of positive Gs uh, around this layout and it's just overall a very good coaster to experience. Highlight elements for me are the zero G roll. I think that's one of the most snappiest zero G rolls out there, and um, also the batwing element. Now the batwing element is a basically a modern version of the cobra roll, which has been seen on several uh, coasters. But the batwing is um, so much more intense than the cobra roll and so much smoother as well. So um, the batwing is probably my favourite element on Montu, out of any of the elements that it has. Another great thing about Montu is the right uh, setting, and it, the way it dives in and out of the trenches, that um, creates some um, very good um, foot choppers on the ride. Plus the Egyptian feeling adds to the ride experience as well. So Montu comes in at the number 14 spot. At the number 13 spot, I have Taran. Now Taran is a very um, good uh, Intamin Blitz coaster. It's um, full of airtime and the setting is amazing. Like Honestly, the scenery around it, it ma makes you so immersed into the entire theme park which is what a theme park should do, and you feel like you're in a village. Located, It is located in Klukheim, and the all the theming around it is fantastic, 10 out of 10. Now, the, my one issue with Terran, I love the layout of it, and each element to, um, provides um, quite good airtime, but some of, some of it gets a bit repetitive, as it mostly is all banked turns and airtime hills. I w did wish you had a few, maybe inversions just to break up the ride a little bit but for me it's a it is a phenomenal experience and i cannot wait to um, get back on it it also has um it um, looks beautiful as well it has it crosses over itself m more times than any other coaster and taran is just an overall great experience don't go in thinking it's just a normal coaster it's an experienced coaster and one i highly recommend you try out at some point so Taran comes in at the number 13 spot. Coming to the number 12 spot is Nitro at Six Flags to Great Adventure. Now Nitro for me is one of the... It, it's a good um, B&M Hyper. Um, and it does provide very good floater airtime and has quite a few intense moments. My one thing with Nitro is, is my memory of it is a little bit vague. Because I, I rode it quite a few... Um, only once when I went to Six Flags to Great Adventure. So I definitely need to get a re-ride on it again. But for the rides I do remember on it, I remember it being a phenomenal ride with um, great floater airtime. Also, the I don't actually mind the colour scheme. The blue and um, the yellow and um, blue, which I um, saw on my visit, look quite nice actually. And uh, yeah, overall, Nitro comes in at number twelve. Now we're into the top ten on my um, top twenty coasters. Coming in the number ten spot is Mako. Now, Mako is um, a brilliant um, B&M hyper for me. It's one of my favourite hypers out there, of course, making it into my top ten. And what Mako does, it does it really well. Mako is an airtime machine, a floater airtime machine. You go down the first drop into the um, left-hand turning um, outer bank airtime hill. You then go into um, a camelback, which um, provides some really strong floater airtime. And then you go into the turnaround section, which that bit is kind of a, a dead spot for me. And then um, you um, make your way back um, towards the station. Then uh, you go into some more airtime hills, which 
actually provide him some sustained floater airtime, which is really good. And then um, you, you head towards the uh, mid-course brake run, which that bit kind of um, breaks at the ride and it kind of slows it down. Then you uh, head into some twists and turns, which is a bit of a dead section for me, but the setting over the lake is phenomenal um, before making your way back into the station. Yeah, Mako is a good ride, and for being the height it is, which is exactly 200 foot, it's a, it's a phenomenal ride and shows that size doesn't matter when it comes to coasters. So in the number 10 spot comes Mako. In the number 9 spot, I have Conda, a Wallaby of Belgium. Now, Condar, for me, it's, it's a really good ride, but it does take time to warm up. Um, as the day goes along, it does get better and better. And um, what I really like about Condor, C Condor is the um, all the airtime is really strong on it. So you go down the first drop, kind of like an Expedition G-Force first drop, um, but it, it goes over the drop really quickly. Then you go into the first air, um, Camelback airtime hill, provides some strong... Um, sustained ejector then the um, outer bank air time hill that also provides ejector then possibly my and it, which is my highlighted element on Conda is the um, non-inverted co-roll roll. I, when I went into that element I was out of my seat the entire time that's how much air time you get on that ride I was not in my seat hardly at all on Conda and e even towards the end of the ride whether you got those final few bunny hills it is really um you're always out of your seat it also has a few intense moments especially in those helixes below the non inverted cobra roll those are really um forceful so yeah conda makes it into my number nine spot and the number eight spot is hyperion now hyperion for me it's a very good coaster very good it starts us out on better layout coaster where you have the first um camel back that provides some sustained ejector then you've got the um, dive loop, which is a really good element. I really enjoy um, that when I rode it, because um, you were out of your seat the entire time. Then you go uh, after the uh, second um, camel back hill, um, which also provides some good ejector airtime. You then go into a kind of twister layout. Now, all of the uh, airtime hills on um, the twister layout section, they all provide very good, strong ejector airtime. And uh, it's pretty forceful as well in certain sections. Because it's um, one of the tallest coasters in Europe, the height is, I believe, above 250 foot, it, you get whipped down that first drop, and it you feel like you're falling forever on that um, coaster. Then you make it to the final brake run, you've got the splashdown effect as well, which is also pretty cool. And uh, the overall, I would say that the theme of the coaster isn't very pleasant, uh, or... Not pleasant, uh, not unpleasant, but it's just not the best looking coaster in my opinion. Like it feels like it's just been plonked on the flat uh, grassland. But um, overall, Hyperion is an amazing coaster with an amazing layout, so that's why it comes in my number eight spot. Now the number seven spot is El Toro. El Toro for me, when I rode it, it did feel like quite a bit rough, as I didn't understand how to ride wooden coasters at the time. But um, I think if I rode it again, I would enjoy it a lot more. El Toro was a wild ride for me when I rode it. It was it had so much air time over the um, um, massive Camelbacks and was really my first experience of a coaster like that. It also has um, a few other things going for it as well. The the sheer speed you get off the first drop is another highlight for me, and the um, switch track where the the train goes one way and then another that is another highlight for me. But Overall, my memory is a bit foggy on um, El Toro, and I really would like to get some rewrites on it at some point, if it ever opens again. But El Toro comes in the number seven spot. Coming in the number six spot is Ride to Happiness at Plopsland de Pan. Now, this ride is just pure insane. You start off with a, uh, with a Jojo roll, which gives some great hang time on it. You almost feel like you're falling out of your seat. Then you go into the launch. Now, the... The coaster comes to a complete stop um, as it goes into the launch. And then you feel like, oh, it's not going to be a mile ride. Absolutely not. It's not a mile ride by any stretch of the imagination. You then get launched straight into a um, top hat, which provides some great sustained ejector. You then have the um, banana roll, which is very uh, 
fun element. It's kind of, and um, yeah. You then go into a vertical loop, which is the most intense part of the ride. Then um, you head to um, back towards the uh, main section of the ride, which you then got kind of weird, like uh, I don't know how to describe it. Um, Heartline rolls just suspended in the air. It's kind of a weird element, but um, after that you do a couple more um, inversions and bank turns before going to the final run of airtime hills, which give really good e ejector airtime. And unlike a lot of other Mac rides coasters. It doesn't suffer from the problem that your uh, restraints come tighter and tighter down onto you. So yeah, Ride to Happiness makes it into the number 6 spot on my top 20. And the number 5 spot is Expedition G-Force. Now, when I wrote this, please bear in mind it was in 39 degree weather. So it may have been running quite a bit um, better than uh, what other people may have experienced. But I absolutely love Expedition G-Force. The layout of it is flawless. It's got a really good layout. And every element d delivers on that coaster. You, you go down the first drop, and that first drop whips you over the for, um, over the drop because because it's got a cable lift and it's going up much faster. It felt it it was just insane. I I do feel like it is a very good coaster. And um, every element hits hard on it. It's a, it's a very intense ride. Every every element hits hard at you on Expedition G-Force. So a few highlighted elements for me is the um, switch track where the train goes one way then another. You get thrown out of your seat at that point uh, before um, and then heading towards um, the end of the ride, the final run of Eject uh, Bunny Hills that is also another highlight. And unlike Goliath where some of it is a bit hit or miss on um, Expedition G-Force none of it's a miss. Every element on Expedition G Force hits and hits hard. Now it may and Intermen said it themselves, it's their finest creation they've ever made. So if that doesn't give me any indicator of how good this ride is, then I don't know what will. But I I do have it in the number two spot in terms of element um Intermins I've ridden, but o overall it comes in my number five spot. Expedition G Force comes in number five. Coming to the number four spot is Untamed at Wallaby Holland. Now, Untamed, Untamed is just relentless. It's a relentless ride with a great first drop. Even now, it's going out of the station. It has a heart beating sound, which really gets you pumped up, ready for the ride. You've got, got then some whippy inversions. Some of the inversions are really intense, actually. Especially the first one. Then uh, every element pops and... This ride is not necessarily about the versions, even though it has more most inversions out of any hybrid coaster. The main focus of this ride is the airtime, and every airtime hill hits hard. You're like out of your seat for the majority of the ride. You are hardly ever in your seat. My one criticism of this ride, though, is the restraints, as I did find that after coming off the ride, after experiencing so much airtime, that my legs were hurting a little bit. But that doesn't change the fact that I, I wouldn't want this ride any other way, to be honest. I, I would rather um, suffer the little bit of pain you get for that injector airtime. That injector airtime is a manic. It is really um, good. Some of the best airtime I've experienced. So, Untamed comes in at the number four spot. Coming in at the number three spot is Velocicoaster at Islands of Adventure in uh, Orlando. Now, this coaster, I believe, is the definition of a perfect coaster. It's got everything you want in it. It's got airtime. It's got theming. It's got whippy inversions. It's got ha some hang time even. It's got everything you want in a coaster. It's of course got the uh, Jurassic Park theme, which is um, very cool. The uh, raptors are in it. Then uh, you you get launched out initially into a kind of twister layout with, um, with the, some of the first inversions actually providing some quite good sustained ejector. You've got ejector airtime all around. And then it, the ride is kind of split up into two sections, a twister section for starter, and then kind of an outer back section for later. And then um, the second section is, you have the second launch, go into a top hat, and then um, finish off the rest of the ride. This ride is so long, it's got such a good theme, and overall it is the definition of a perfect coaster. There's no other words to describe it. I've, it has a glorious setting over the lake, 
especially with the castle in the background, it, that also adds to the immersion of the ride. And overall, this ride is perfect. I, I can't describe it any other way than perfect. The Zero G stall also gives some um, good whip to it. And the Mosasaurus roll over the water felt like great, gave great hang time on it, which you, you don't normally often see on a coaster. But it really does provide a very good experience. I highly recommend Velocicoaster. And not only that, but the trains are fantastic. The lap bars are so comfortable. And it's, it's just a perfect ride. And especially at night when it has all the effects around it. It's got fire effects, it's got lighting, it's got everything you want for a coaster to be perfect. It's got, it's it's literally got a thousands of elements on it. <laughs> well, not probably over exaggerating, but it's got so many elements that really punch and really hit hard. That I personally f uh, think that it could easily be a number one if, if I wanted it to be. I'm not even kidding, but I have, do have two coasters uh, above it, but the last coaster for me comes in at number three. Now time for the top two. And in number two spot, I got Zadra at Energylandia. This coaster really delivers on everything that a coaster does, but even more. It's got a great first drop. The first drop, you're out of your seat the entire way down. You go into the first turnaround. That bit is really intense. It's, you grey out for most of that um, section. You have, then have the zero G stall, which actually uh, provides very good whip and it actually provides some very good views as well because it's so high off the ground. You then have the um, quite a few more airtime moments and it wraps around itself going into the structure and it's kind of like an out and back layout it is. I would, that's the best way I would describe it. But every airtime hill pops on it. It's really powerful airtime. And I, th I think my only one thing with it is the queue is too big. That's the one complaint I have it with it. Like it doesn't need that long of a queue. And like you start off in a castle I'm like a uh, town section and then you just you have to walk a, a long way to get to the main coaster itself, which does kind of hinder the ride for re rides, but that's just a personal gripe on mine. But um you then also have to wear goggles on if you're on the front row, but um I don't know why you need them, but uh, it's for health and safety reasons of course. So take that uh, as you will. But um, my favourite row probably on this ride is probably the back row because the the amount of whip you got on that first drop. But overall, Zadra is a phenomenal ride, and I highly recommend you get out of Energylandia as soon as possible to experience this wonderful, wonderful attraction. Now we're into the number one spot, and the number one coaster on from for me in 2022 is Iron When I first rode Iron Guazi, it was not my number one, not at all. But after it warmed up. The ride is relentless. The first drop is awesome, even better than Zadra once it's warmed up. It, you are out of your seat the entire way down, giving you sustained ejector airtime. It then has the outer bank airtime hill, which really provides some great sustained ejector as well. You then have several inversions, or two inversions, I should say, with the zero G stall. That that does um, provide a, um, a quite a good whip to it. But my highlighted inversion is the death roll. The, the inversion inside the structure, phenomenal. That really gives you some insane whip to it. It like, forces you through the inversion, I'm not even joking. Then you also have the outer bank airtime hill as well, which that's alright, that gives them some uh, quite solid ejector. But the thing with me with this ride is every element gives strong forces and strong ejector. Every element um, punches you out of your seat. It's like Almost as if you're being thrown from a catapult. I'm not even going to um, um, joke around here. But um, another thing, great thing with this um, coaster is the setting. I love the, the positioning of it. The way the coaster is facing inwards towards the park. So when you go over the first drop, you can actually see the entire park. And Bush Gardens is beautiful anyway, but Iron Gwazi is even makes it look even better within the skyline of the park. It's over 200 foot tall. It's the tallest um, coaster in Florida. And overall, I highly recommend getting yourself out to Bush Gardens. Bush Gardens is a phenomenal park. And Iron Gwazi definitely makes it w w even more worthwhile. And I mean, Iron Gwazi is a ride that's been a... I, I just love the ride in general. Like, the train design is fantastic. 
and you can still see some of the elements of the former Guazi, but this uh, Iron Guazi is just a phenomenal ride. And if you really want to go and ride it, I'll just say, don't think about it, just do it. Just go out to um, Bush Gardens, Tampa, and just ride Iron Guazi. It is that good of a coaster. So Iron Guazi comes in at the number one spot on my top 20. Thank you all for watching my um, top 20 video. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. Please like, um, share and subscribe if you want to. And um, from me, um, Joster, to you, guys, have a happy new year. And I'll see you in the new year where I've got some big plans uh, made up. So hope you um, sit back and enjoy.